when you have a buffer, a buffer is a conjugate pair. One is an acid and one is a conjugate base. And together they work to protect the pH. So we've got a castle here where they're trying to protect that system. They don't react with one another because they are a conjugate pair. They're related, they're a team. If we had a buffer all by itself, this is a normal common ion problem. We can solve and figure out what that pH is if we knew the molarities, which I just made these up. Um, we could use the K expression to find the hydrogen, or uh, a lot easier here if we know we have a buffer, we have the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, which lets us take the pKa and the, the log of the acid over the base, which is kind of the same over here, the acid over the base, to give us a pH. But what does a buffer do? How does it protect the pH? Well, it's a fight, and this is literally a war. Something comes in, if a hydroxide comes in and tries to attack the castle, then the buffer needs to defend the hydroxide. So what's going to happen? That hydroxide comes in, and it's a base. Bases are neutralized. See, I told you it's a war. With acids. So the acid comes out to fight the hydroxide. This is a neutralization equation. We're going to make water, and we're going to make some more A minus. Okay? So this is our war. And depending on what the molarity of the hydroxide is, say we have the acid was 1.15, the Conjugate, we did have some to begin with because it's in the buffers, 0.12. We know that um, this hydroxide here could go down. The, the goal is to get this to go away. That way the buffer protects it. This is going to go down. This is going to go up. So it's going to be a plus X minus X problem here. But this is, a, this is a stoichiometry equation. This is neutralization. This is a battle. Once this battle is over, then we, we still have a buffer. If we still have a buffer and we survive the battle, we can come over and calculate the pH again. We would have new molarities in our Henderson-Hasselbalch equation uh, if this was able to be neutralized and go down to zero. The other thing that can happen is an acid could attack the castle. And if the acid attacks the castle, if some acid gets introduced, then the base will be deployed to come out and meet it. So this is a, a base attack, and this is a, uh, then we can have an acid attack. And the buffer can defend against either one. So if an acid gets added to the system, the conjugate base will be deployed to neutralize it. And those are going to combine together to make the conjugate HA. So here again, if we had 0.12 to start with um, and 0.15, so it's a different problem than the one that we had up there, then we've got as long as this can go down to zero and get defeated, then at the end we will still have um, some leftover A minus and we will have some HA. As long as we still have the buffer left and the, we had enough conjugate base to neutralize this threat, we have protected the pH, so this buffer has been successful. We will still have a buffer, so we're not done yet. We need to come over here and then calculate the pH again. Henderson-Hasselbalch is the best bet if you've got the buffer. Um, the conjugate over the, the conjugate base over the acid, you can plug these molarities in and figure out what the new pH is after the base attack or the acid attack. You would calculate a new pH with new molarities. But this is how a buffer works. We want to be able to write these balanced equations to see when acids or bases get added to our buffer, what will happen, calculate how the buffer responds, and then calculate a new pH.